All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Chris. Um, this is Pranav. Uh, so we're uh, on the engineering dean's team. Going to give you guys a quick info session tonight. Uh, just kind of going over a bunch of things about the College of Engineering. As far as introductions go, uh, I'm a junior in mechanical engineering. Uh, involves on a couple different things on campus here. Uh, Greek life, music groups, engineering orgs, a um, bunch of different stuff. Yeah, um, for my introduction, I'm Pranav. Um, I'm currently a senior majoring in computer science. Um, and yeah, feel free to ask some questions along the way uh, throughout the presentation, uh, whether you want to raise your hand or uh, just ask in the chat. Um, but yeah, we can get started. So uh, what does it take to be a successful college engineering student? Uh, first thing we have here is creativity. Obviously, engineering is more than just uh, the, the raw math and science. It's a lot of application-based math and science and creative problem solving. What kind of new solutions can we come up with using those fundamental principles to um, find new solutions to problems? Uh, teamwork, lots of teamwork. Uh, right from the get-go in the first semester of your freshman year, you're going to be placed in a group project-based class that we'll talk about in a little bit, uh, just focusing on engineering fundamentals. But obviously, um, teamwork is a huge aspect of what an engineer does in the real world, and so that's something we really want to instill in uh, our undergrad students as well. Uh, study habits. If you don't have them now, uh, you will have them. Once you start at college, um, I'm sure most of you can, you know, get away with doing homework the night before it's due or studying for a test the day of. Uh, that definitely changes once you get to college, not just in engineering, but across the board. Uh, so definitely having some good study habits is really important. Uh, having an interest in math and science is necessary. You don't really have to like it, uh, but if you're good at it and you have some uh, mild interest, that's going to be important since a lot of what we do is math and science based. Uh, and then having a challenging high school background is also really important. Uh, keep in mind that uh, for things like admissions, people are, are the admissions people will um, not like hold it against you if your school doesn't offer like certain AP math, physics, science classes. Um, take whatever the challenging courses are that are available to you. So if that's just um, you know like earlier levels of like calculus, like my high school didn't have Calc BC but it had Calc AB, so that's what I took. Um, but yeah, as long as you're challenging yourself and not really getting engaged, um, they love to see that. So here are a couple of statistics for uh, the freshman class of 2022. The average GPA was a 4.09, average SAT and a math and reading scores you can see here. Um, again, keep in mind, these are averages. So there's a bunch of students below, a bunch of students above, um, and it kind of just bounces that to this. So uh, don't be worried if you don't quite make these numbers. It is a holistic review process. Um, and then we do have a 24% female population and 41% uh, underrepresented minority or underserved community population, uh, both of which are a well above the national average. All right, so uh, general engineering. Uh, also, if anyone is uh, interested in building construction in this uh, session, building construction uh, did just recently get moved into the College of Engineering, but the degree program the building construction follows is slightly different. So this doesn't really apply for that. Um, but as far as all of our engineering uh, classes go, you will start as a general engineering major. Um, we don't start out as like a mechanical engineer or a computer science major. We all start um, just as regular engineering uh, with our common entry point and our common classes that we all take. It's all the same math, chemistry, physics, foundations of engineering. Um, and that is done to give you that first year to really feel out which engineering major you actually want to enter into specifically. Um, some people might think this is a little bit off-putting because you don't get to jump right into your major, but it actually increases the four-year graduation rate because nobody is switching their major later on because you already had a lot of time to kind of explore other options and figure out what you really wanted to do. Um, with uh, transfer credit like AB, IB, CLEP, and dual enrollment, um, you can opt to transfer or not transfer those credits. Uh, that QR code right there will take you to the transfer credit database, I believe. It's a great resource. You can look exactly what test, what score you need, what specific class that will test you out of. Um, so super helpful. Uh, definitely check that out uh, when you're looking at like your AP scores to transfer. Um, your pathways for your gen ed curriculum. Pathways, uh, we like to call them like kind of your fun classes. Um, can also definitely be GPA boosters. 
Um, but they're just kind of fun classes that you'll take outside of like your engineering core curriculum to get kind of that breadth of knowledge and well-rounded college education. Um, focus is definitely more on maybe like the liberal arts aspect of things. I'm taking a class about design appreciation right now. I still don't really know what design appreciation is, but it's been a really neat class. I've learned about a bunch of different stuff way outside of what I would normally uh, talk about like in my um, engineering classes. And then uh, at the end of your freshman year, you will get to select your major of choice. Uh, a 3.0 will guarantee your first choice. Um, and again, uh, some people find that off-putting because it's like, oh, I have to get a 3.0 to get into my uh, desired major. Um, every single year, the freshman GPA rises. Oh, it doesn't work. Okay. Um, I, I can find that link and send it in a second. Yeah, sick. Um, yeah, the, the freshman GPA uh, has been pretty consistently rising year after year since that 3.0 has been implemented. Um, it's really not something too difficult to get, but it's a great motivator for students uh, to make sure they're really paying attention in class and working hard. Um, and the reason we have this is to kind of help manage our enrollment for specific programs. Um, we wanna keep the faculty to uh, faculty staff ratio um, pretty consistent. So you do get that face time with your professors, um, but if there's 200, uh, yeah, so if you don't get a 3.0, um, two different things can happen. There might be a program like mining engineering that uh, less people want to go into and they'll have 100 slots and there's only 75 students that have a 3.0 that want mining engineering. So all those 75 students will get that, but then if there's 25 more students that have like the 299, 298, um, they will also all get into mining engineering because there are slots in the program. Um, and then if kind of the other case is if there's 200 people that want to go into CS, but they only have 150 slots, they will make 200 slots. So everyone that has that 3.0 will be accepted uh, into CS. So if you get that 3.0, you get your first choice no matter what. And I want to say it's like a 95% rate for people getting their first choice. It's, it's pretty common. Uh, people will... Um, like what Dr. Watford likes to say is that um, people will do what they need to to get what they want uh, freshman year. So, yeah, the other thing I want to mention about that is that the average GPA after the first year is typically at two point oh six, I think. Um, so most students are above that and are able to get their first choice guaranteed. And as Chris mentioned, it's still pretty common to get it even if um, you don't quite hit that number. So uh, moving on to the foundations of engineering. So this is a course you're gonna be taking in your first year, which is centered around getting you familiar with engineering as a concept and as a field as a whole. Um, so you're gonna be exploring all the different, uh, all the 14 or 15 different um, engineering majors and looking into what each major does, how they play a role in different projects and kind of uh, they help you make a decision towards which one you wanna choose in the future. So. One of the requirements for this is that you have to attend at least three info sessions for three different majors. Um, another thing is uh, it really just helps you build some fundamental engineering skills like Python, um, SolidWorks, and a couple other uh, tools. And lastly, there's a during your second semester of this course, you're going to be taking a year long, uh, sorry, a semester long project um, where you work in teams of four and build something such as a wind turbine or a drone or an RC car. Um, kind of just familiarize yourself with a bunch of different tools and really gain engineering experience at a very early stage in your college career. All right, let's blow me. Uh, so this is a snapshot of the College of Engineering from 2021. Um, this is our entire enrollment. Uh, you'll see that engineering education makes up a pretty significant portion of that. I'm sorry, can you repeat? Uh, 2.06. I think it was 3.06, right? Is what you said? Yeah, something like that. Um, so this is just a snapshot of uh, the, yeah, I'm sorry, College of Engineering from 2021. Uh, engineering education, that is all of our freshman engineering class. Um, that's why it makes up such a big portion. You cannot graduate with a degree in engineering education. After freshman year, you will get placed into one of the uh, other engineering programs of your choice. Um, you can see here, we have some uh, pretty big programs like computer science, uh, mechanical is pretty big, aerospace is getting up there as well. Um, if you take this number and you divide it by three, that'll be like your entire like grade level for that class. 
Um, and despite having some pretty big numbers up here, I think uh, VT does do a really good job of managing your class sizes, uh, managing again that faculty to student ratio, so you can really still get that face time with your professor, even if there are a thousand people in your major. Right, so. so looking at the opportunities in the College of Engineering, uh, first of all, you can minor in different fields of engineering. So, for example, if you're a mechanical engineer, but you still want to learn a little bit of computer science, you can take a minor in that. Um, again, these are not the only minors you can choose. You can definitely go outside that um, and explore minors in other departments as well. Um, but these are just lists that are easily accessible for college engineering students. There's also research opportunities. A lot of the times um, it's easy to connect with professors who you teach classes and also um, do research on the side. And there's plenty of opportunities to help uh, build experience towards um, internships and future job opportunities where we get to work with, uh, with professors on some really cool research projects, um, not only in the College of Engineering, but other departments as well. For study abroad, we're gonna to touch on this, I think on the next slide or two, um, but there's a Rise Software Study pr Program where you can study abroad the summer between your freshman and sophomore year, or um, each department has their own study abroad programs as well. And then lastly, the professional societies and or engineering organizations are additional tools where you can meet like-minded like people in engineering or your specific department of engineering um, and work on projects, work on teams, uh, and really just uh, have resources and opportunities to connect with a bunch of other people. All right, so uh, the Rising Sophomore Abroad Program is a really neat award-winning program we have here for Rising Sophomores. It's something you will apply for as a freshman uh, if you want to in your first semester. I want to say the applications go out around October, and then like by November, they'll decide um, who is going uh, on the program to the... Sorry, I, I'm going to minimize the chat one second. I can get to the questions. Um, but yeah, so it's a, an award-winning program for uh, freshmen. Uh, it's really neat. You will take a three-credit class during your spring semester, uh, which does fulfill one of your pathways requirements. This class really focuses on engineering in a global context, learning about engineering uh, in different cultures and how that can impact uh, how we solve problems. Uh, it's a really, really neat class. I took it my freshman year. Unfortunately, I didn't get to go on the trip because of COVID, uh, but I still learned a ton, which is really neat. Um, you will travel at uh, the end of May, right after uh, finals, I believe. It's a two-week trip. It's kind of like a study abroad light uh, where you will get to go kind of experience what it's like to study abroad. Um, I don't believe there's any actual class that you take um, or any classwork that you do um, while you're traveling. It's more of getting to explore. Uh, I know students that went to Italy and Germany uh, last year that got to go see the Ducati and Ferrari factories, which seems really neat. They just get to kind of see that peak in the industry. Um, so yeah, it's a really great program, something really unique uh, here that we offer for uh, study abroad. Yeah, so moving on to internships and co-op experiences. Again, um, if you're not familiar, internships typically take place during summer and you're working with a company for about three months um, between eight, two semesters. And then co-ops are typically uh, done during the semester and, and you take time off from school uh, to again work with the company and get some real world experience there. So these these programs both of which uh, both are really helpful. Um, you can see the map here. These are just companies and places where the team's team people like Chris and myself um, who give these presentations. These are places where we've interned in the past um, and we'd like to say that if it was all the College of Engineering, this whole map as well as places across the world would be orange. Um, so there's plenty of opportunities and resources to help you uh, pursue these internships and co-ops. So uh, like Pranav said, well, we have a lot of resources on campus here to help students land internships and co-ops. Uh, one of those is our career fairs. We have one of the largest student-run career fairs in the country called Engineering Expo uh, that we host here every fall. It's a really, really great uh, experience. Uh, we bring in over 300 companies um, in the fall that are here to hire Hokies. They want Hokie engineers. Um, what's really fun is we like to say that Hokies hire Hokies. Um, a lot of people or a lot of the recruiters that will come back and recruit um, students at these career fairs for internships, co-ops, and full-time jobs are Virginia Tech alumni, um, which makes it a little bit less stressful when you're talking to somebody that you know you've had the same classes as, had the same professors as. The conversation be, can become a little bit more relaxed rather than just uh, 
kind of the nitty gritty talking about your experience. Um, I had a really great experience with Expo. Um, I got to intern at Tesla this past summer and my manager was a uh, Hoki, a Virginia Tech engineer. Um, I think a large part of why I landed that job is because the guy that was interviewing me also went to tech. Um, so yeah, you really get to experience uh, kind of the Hoki alumni network and how powerful that is with something like Expo. Yeah, uh, Galileo and Hypatia are two living learning communities, which are uh, communities you can stay in during your first year and uh, beyond where you'll get to stay in a hall full of, full of engineers. Um, and Galileo is for men, Hypatia is for women. And overall, it's just a great program to be a part of because uh, especially during that first year, it's, you're going to be struggling with a lot of your first engineering courses. That might be a little bit challenging for different people, depending on their background. Um, and it's really helpful to be uh, in a room or like in a hall with a bunch of other engineers who you can quickly ask questions, work with, work with on projects, um, and just connect really easily. There's also a design lab. As you can see, it's a picture in the, the two bottom right pictures. Um, there's a design lab in the hall itself where you'll have 24 seven access to and can work on projects, whether your school projects or your personal projects. Um, and it's just really great resource for anybody who's interested. If you are interested, you can apply for this pretty early. Um, and it's, uh, I think applications, I'm not sure the current timeline, but um, applications do open pretty early and uh, it's, it's a great program if you're interested. See, um, so what percentage of engineering majors live in these dorms? Um, I don't know the exact percentage, but I, I want to say that Hogue Hall houses like 800 students, um, I think. Uh, I lived in Hogue freshman year. I don't think how many. Yeah, I have no idea. I want to say they say it's about 800. Um, so it is a pretty significant amount. But also, um, if you don't live in uh, Galileo or Hypatia, you will obviously still get, um, sorry, there's a lot of other opportunities for like that engineering mentorship. Uh, one of those we'll talk about right now uh, is peer mentoring and STEP. Uh, peer mentoring is a program very similar to uh, Galileo and Hypatia. It follows the same mentorship model where you'll have one upper class mentor uh, with a bunch of mentees, a bunch of freshmen. Um, and it's a great person to have as a resource um, you know, learning about what classes you should take, what classes you should not take with other classes, which professors you want for certain classes, um, getting help in class if you need it, um, just having someone who's already been through it kind of guiding you uh, through your first couple steps here as a Hokie engineer. And then STEP is our summer transition into engineering program. This is, I believe, a six-week program, I think, uh, offered uh, the summer right before your freshman year. And what you'll do is take your classes as you would uh, to start your freshman year. So you take uh, calculus, I believe chemistry and foundations of engineering. And what you'll do is uh, just go to class like normal uh, up until the very first test. And you'll take that first test and kind of experience what that's like uh, test taking in a college environment. Um, and obviously if you did well, then you're prepared for fall semester. And if you didn't do so well, um, you'll kind of have a better idea of what your study habits need to be like moving forward in the semester. What's really neat about STEP is all of the grades get wiped entirely. So it really is just like a total trial run for your freshman year. Uh, but it's a great way to kind of learn your way around campus, meet other Hokie engineers over the summer before everyone gets here and it's uh, packed. Um, yeah, two really neat programs that you can do if you're not in uh, Hogue Hall. Um, so touching on some of the design teams, these are teams that work in the Wear Lab at Virginia Tech that um, has access to a bunch of uh, building resources. So you can see here, there's a big list on the left. Um, and some of them are really cool projects that are nationally and sometimes even internationally awarded. These are really great for uh, getting experience working on real life engineering problems um, that you can add to your resume, uh, learn a lot from, and just build a, a really great network outside of your classes. Um, I, you can see here like Formula SAE, it's a picture on the bottom left. Um, Chevy also donates an electric car where students work on uh, improving that. And there's a the picture on the top right is Concrete Canoe, which is um, I can pause it, but a uh, canoe made out of concrete. And personally, I don't know how to say the float, but uh, it's a really cool program where they can compete and are making really cool technology there. Uh, so some rankings here. 
um, our engineering rankings, uh, according to U.S. News, uh, with the 16th best undergraduate engineering program in the country, uh, the 30th best graduate program. And then um, we have the number seven producer of engineers and the number eight producer of women engineers. Um, it's really neat. And we have a lot of programs here to support um, girls in STEM, like SWE, our Society of Women in Engineering. Uh, there's also respective societies for um, each engineering major as well. Um, we have a link to these slides. I believe there's a QR code at the very end of this that links you to this exact presentation, I think. But if not, um, we can figure that out at the end of this year. I can, I can probably just shoot you an email. Uh, so these are our class outcomes from the class of 2021. So about 90% of the freshmen who started in their first year of engineering continued on to the second year. Um, this, this number improved to 99 for people who, who are in Galileo or Hypatia, um, as again, it's just a program to help strengthen your first year as an engineering student. Um, the goal of our first year engineering program is not to like kind of weed out uh, students or anything like that. It's really just to get you used to engineering um, and they do encourage you to be a part of this uh, wonderful program. After graduation, uh, about 59% of uh, people are employed, 20% have plans to attend graduate school, uh, and the rest of them, there aren't quite uh, as many responses, so that explains the missing number. And then lastly, the median starting salary is around $70,000, which is uh, a bit higher than the university average. All right, so scholarships. So parents, listen to this one. Um, so if you're a freshman, there is the General University Scholarship Application. Uh, this is something you can fill out after you submit your admissions application due in mid-January. Um, and then obviously the Office of Financial Aid is also going to have a ton of information about scholarships, much more than we will present uh, here tonight. So definitely check that out. Um, I believe it's like just a link on the main VT website. Um, they'll have a ton of resources there. Uh, if anyone is a Virginia Community College transfer student, there is the Leo A. Pata scholarship available. Uh, and then for upperclassmen, uh, I guess one thing to note, as you move up in your degree program, um, a lot more funds become available for your specific department. Um, alumni will not donate back, or I guess it's more common for alumni to donate back to their specific uh, program instead of just the College of Engineering as a whole. Uh, so because of that, we get a lot of funding in each specific department uh, that can be allocated to the students in those majors. Uh, which is something you'll have access to in like your sophomore, junior, senior year. Um, and it's also one application for everything, which is really, really nice. It's very convenient. And looking at computer requirements, um, one thing to note that is these are these do update sometimes. So I'll probably look into this closer towards uh, starting your first year. But um, a laptop or two in one tablets, um, two in one tablets are really helpful because uh, you can take notes with your pencil or pen. Um, and submit them directly on Canvas and using the Canvas app. Um, Windows 10 is required for your first year and potentially later on, uh, depending on your specific degree. And uh, overall, yeah, just keep in mind that these may update. So uh, check in later, um, closer, closer to your uh, starting date for uh, if you're looking to buy a computer then. All right, uh, so now we're just gonna run through uh, all the different majors we offer here in the College of Engineering. Uh, first up is electrical engineering. Uh, electrical engineers develop the tools and techniques to sense, measure, convert, transmit, control, and receive energy and intelligence. They can work in a bunch of different fields like comms and network, robotics, controls, energy, photonics, uh, different wave systems, and space systems. A uh, bunch of really neat design teams along with the ECE department. That picture on the top left is Bolt, our electric motorcycle racing team. They do some really cool stuff in the wire lab. Yeah, so computer engineering is uh, somewhat similar to electrical engineering, but in that it looks at hardware development, but there's also more software development in this as well. Um, so it's kind of a mix of electrical engineering, computer science in that sense. So these five bullet points listed on the side are different concentrations you can choose within the, uh, within the computer engineering major. Um, so if you're more interested on the hardware side, you can pursue chip scale integration or robotics. Uh, whereas if you're more interested in the software side, maybe you're looking to machine learning or cybersecurity. Uh, 
Uh, I, yeah, I can take this slide as well because I think it's the best major in computer science. Um, it's my major and uh, it's a really cool one to be part of. Again, comparing it to electrical engineering and uh, computer engineering, it, this one's completely software-based uh, as opposed to hardware-based. Um, there are two uh, focuses you can choose in the, within computer science. So you can choose uh, cybersecurity or um, big data. Those are two degree paths, or you can just choose general computer science, which is what I do. Um, if you look at these pictures, the picture on the top left is a virtual reality box where you can test out virtual reality games and anything else that you work on. And the two pictures on the bottom are Virginia Tech's annual hackathon, which is an opportunity to build computer science projects, um, show them off to sponsors and potential companies for internships and uh, full-time roles later. So yeah, again, a lot of software and programming, programming languages that you learn in this, um, but it's really helpful. Uh, and I think a really fun major to be a part of. I think this one's the best. Um, so mechanical engineering is my major. Um, we call it the Swiss Army Knife of Engineering because it is probably one of the most broad disciplines um, that you can uh, get out of the College of Engineering. Uh, we do have two new programs in this uh, major, actually, which is Automotive Engineering and Robotics and Mechatronics. Those are two different tracks that you can uh, focus on within a mechanical engineering degree to get uh, kind of like a specialization uh, certificate on your degree. Uh, but Mechies can work in a bunch of different industries. Uh, some popular ones are the automotive industry, design and manufacturing, uh, energy materials. There's a nuclear engineering minor really popular with Mechie, uh, and then also robotics and autonomy. Um, some really neat pictures here of the design teams out of Mechi. We have HEBT uh, as the Camaro there from, I think, 2015, uh, Formula SAE, and then Baja, a bunch of different really neat, obviously, vehicle-based design teams. Um, I've gotten the experience uh, to work in the automotive industry for like over a year now in a bunch of different functions, and it's been really neat because I've worked um, on a bunch of different teams in the industry. And because I have such a breadth of knowledge from the major, I'm able to apply what I'm learning in the classroom to everything from like designing and prototyping vehicles to uh, manufacturing, quality, kind of all across the board. Yeah, moving on to aerospace engineering. Um, so aerospace and ocean engineering are actually two similar majors because they both focused on propulsion of, through fluid, in this case, propulsion through air. Um, in aerospace, you'll learn a lot about aerodynamics, flight dynamics control, propulsion, and aerospace structures. Um, the picture in the top left is a Rolls-Royce engine, which is currently located in Goodwin Hall. Um, in the top right, you can see Virginia Tech's drone park, where you can uh, build, test, and fly different drones. Um, and again, a lot of uh, design teams around us that uh, like you'll see the picture in the bottom left um, is an internationally competing design team um, that uses a bunch of aerospace engineers to pursue a really cool goal. Uh, and so like Pranav said, ocean engineering is very similar to aerospace engineering. It's the study of a body uh, you know, through a fluid, just this fluid being water instead of air. Uh, so it's pretty common for people to double major in both. Um, with ocean specifically, it's unique in that it's one of the only programs in the country for ocean engineering. I think there's like three in the country. Um, they can focus on hydrodynamics, naval engineering, propulsion structures, and vehicle dynamics. Uh, despite being a smaller department, there are a ton of resources for students in this major, a bunch of design teams as well. We have human powered sub and sailbot both highlighted here. I was doing this presentation with, uh, with the guy on the human powered sub team uh, a couple of weeks ago. And he was telling me the story about how the competition they go to the first time they went, there's, there was something in the rule book where they didn't, I guess you can put an actual person in the submarine and have them power it. Um, or some weird, uh, I forget the exact story, but they won and they had to change the rules in the competition because they found the loopholes. That was kind of funny, but um, yeah, it's a really neat program with a bunch of resources as well. I'm moving on to industrial systems engineering, sometimes known as IFP. Um, this is really concerned with like the design, development, and improvement of different 
uh, engineering systems as a whole. So not just looking at the physical parts, but also the processes, the people, the um, professor of knowledge around those information systems. Um, a lot of people who choose to major in ISD often pursue jobs in consulting because they have the knowledge of looking at existing systems and how to improve them, make them more efficient, uh, et cetera. Uh, so chemical engineering uh, is a really neat major. Uh, chemistry students uh, learn how to apply principles from chemistry, bio, biochem to solve problems across a bunch of different industries, uh, electronics, food and health, consumer products, environmental quality, just some of them. Um, there's a bunch of really neat uh, things that chemical engineers can be involved in, like our chem uh, which is a design team, a use chemical reactions to power uh, that vehicle shown there in the top left. Uh, there's also a really neat lab program that is integrated. <laughs> right, there's a neat lab program integrated with this major. Uh, it's called a unit operations lab and it's an integrated study abroad. So they can take this lab uh, in Denmark, I believe it is, uh, or in the US um, here at VT, but you're given the option to do either. Um, so it's a really neat way to kind of get that study abroad experience uh, built into your degree program as well. Look, uh, moving on to material science and engineering, this is looking at um, a bunch of different materials, seeing uh, how they play a role in um, engineering applications. Uh, so you'll get to take classes um, in stuff like that you'll see on the top right. So looking at biomaterials, ceramics, electronic materials, um, and just overall seeing how these are used in manufacturing systems and production systems. Uh, one really cool thing about this major is, uh, you'll notice in the picture at the top left, that is a football player from uh, 2005, uh, Cedric Humes. And this was back when Virginia Tech was actually pretty good at football. He used to um, win the ACC championship and he actually, he, he broke his elbow the week before. So he needed um, a cast and the material science and engineering department built a, a, an ACC eligible cast that he could wear that was um, not only safe, but also comfortable for him to play in. And we ended up winning the championship that year. So uh, they really like to hold that title pretty proud. So uh, civil engineering, you think uh, bridges, roads, buildings, if you've driven over it, taken an elevator up through it, a civil engineer, uh, their hands in it uh, to some capacity. Uh, they work in a bunch of different industries uh, from construction, the environmental industry, uh, the geotech industry, land development, uh, materials, structures, transportation, and water resources. Um, one uh, unique thing about this program, um, you see there in the bottom left, yeah, bottom left, uh, it's two pictures, uh, water samples from the Flint, Michigan water crisis. Uh, one of the faculty uh, in this department was like the head researcher on involved in the water crisis in Flint. Um, and I think all of the civil students take a class with them at some point in their degree program uh, and get to kind of hear about what that experience was like. It's really neat. Um, that top left picture is Steel Bridge, I believe, and then bottom right is Concrete Canoe to our design teams. I still don't really get how they build a canoe out of concrete. That's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, and then uh, the other two majors we'll talk about after this uh, kind of are similar to civil, but uh, slightly adjacent. Yeah, so one of these is construction engineering management. Um, this is gonna look at um, the process of construction as a whole. So uh, being able to build, like plan, design and build out um, different construction projects and overseeing the whole thing um, is the really, really the integral part of this major. Um, one cool thing is that there are a lot of construction sites on campus right now. Um, so students will have the opportunity to go out to these places, uh, look at research that's going on um, and be, really be, kind of be a part of that, which um, I think is a pretty cool experience. You'll also be able to spot them at graduation since they're always wearing those orange hard hats that you see in the top left. And this is another major that uh, enjoys 100% job placement. Uh, and then building construction, uh, like we said in the beginning, building construction is brand new to the College of Engineering. Uh, it's not an engineering degree, but it is uh, housed in the college now. Uh, this program is, um, I think, a little bit less technical and focuses uh, more sort of on what's uh, been 
listed up here. So innovation and emerging tech for uh, building construction and a focus on uh, business and construction management. So a little bit more on the business management aspect, kind of what goes on a construction job site. Um, look at the notes up on the slide notes here in case there's something else. I do not know a lot about this major. Um, yeah, if you look this up online in the Myers Lawson School of Construction site, there um, is definitely going to be a lot more information uh, since it is such a new program. Um, but yeah, also get to do some really cool stuff. Yeah, looking at mining and um, mining and materials engineering, uh, sorry, minerals engineering. Uh, this department actually has a pretty big role in a bunch of other things. Um, all electronics and devices that you use on a daily basis. Uh, materials for those have to be mined on a daily basis. Um, and so as a result, this, this program is uh, very important and it's one of the few majors, uh, uh, few programs in the country that's um, nationally recognized for uh, mining. Um, so again, they'll be, they'll be taking different courses in mining. And I think one of the cool things is that they get to pursue um, they get to look at the query where Hokie stone is mined. So Hokie stone is a specific stone that is used uh, in pretty much all buildings on campus. Um, so it's really cool to look at the actual query where all that comes from and uh, kind of be a part of that. They also have over 90% job placement as well. Uh, biological Systems Engineering, uh, or BSc, kind of connects bio and engineering to solve complex problems affecting a bunch of different industries, uh, looking at things like land and water resources, um, pharmaceuticals, the food industry, and polymers, a bunch of different career paths for graduates uh, with a BSc degree. Um, this is, I believe, one of our newer programs as well. Um, but again, it's a, a really interesting kind of intersection between bio, uh, biology, and engineering, uh, kind of similar to biomedical engineering, which we'll uh, talk about in a second afterwards. Um, but yeah, it's also a neat program in the sense that the students get to go out in the field. Uh, there's a couple pictures up there of students, I believe, on class trips, um, just kind of getting that practical experience outside of the classroom uh, while still being in school. Yeah, and again, this is pretty similar to uh, Previous one, but this is about biomedical engineering, um, where students get to learn more about uh, technology that focuses on human health, safety, and healthcare. Um, so th these majors are typically interdisciplinary, where they'll use a bunch of different fields like uh, math, science, physics, chemistry, and use all that combined to really solve uh, problems at the root of uh, pu public health. Um, one cool thing about this is they're actually uh, student researchers in biomedical engineering who helped discover um, a new Lyme disease test and are now working on cancer research. So um, again, really big impact that students are able to make just within uh, their years after Chance Act. All right, so that is pretty much the conclusion of all of the main stuff we're gonna talk about. There's a few more slides after this and we will stick around for all the questions. Um, but if somebody wants to check if that QR code works, actually, that would be great. If it doesn't, um, we can pop that link in the chat. Um, but that QR code, I believe, has the Explore Engineering site linked. A ton of information just on everything VT. Um, actually, it works. Okay, sick. One of them works. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and then we will, everyone has a picture of that, we'll go to the next slide. If we need to go back, we can go back, but um, let's talk about why we came to uh, the College of Engineering. Mal, do you want to get away? Yeah, I, I can go first. Um, so for me, I had an older brother here who studies computer engineering, and so I had a kind of, kind of a glimpse into the program, and it, I knew that it matched the level of rigor um, and academic quality that I wanted, as well as the opportunities and resources that um, I was looking for. And then secondly was uh, I came to visit Blackford and I thought it was just a really great environment to be a part of. Everybody who I met was super friendly and resourceful. Um, and I just knew it was a community I really wanted to be a part of. Um, I think I'm definitely a little bit of the opposite. I originally did not want to come here at all. Um, my mom dragged me down here for a tour. We were looking at, I think, UMD, UVA, and here. I was like, I did not want to drive this far. It was it takes forever to get here. Blacksburg is in the middle of nowhere. Um, but I got here 
and I'm scared for, I think, Hokey Focus, which is a big, great, big event we had just last weekend. Um, and it, it was so unique and so different from every other college in that everyone was so excited for you to be there and not just the people that were doing the admissions tours and these info session things, but all of the students, you would pass someone, ask where the nearest dining hall was, and everyone is like, oh my God, you're visiting campus. Like, what are you interested in? What do you want to study here? And everyone is just... Um, very invested in the student body. Um, it's the the oot prism of it all, right? And it's just something really unique to Virginia Tech's campus um, that you just feel it's it's a supportive environment. Engineering can be kind of cutthroat, and here it's um, I've found nothing but support from students in my classes, students in my dorm from freshman year that I'm still friends with. I still study for all the same exams for. Um, it's really just been a great experience, um, and campus is nice, and food is good, too, but um, yeah, that's the main part, um, and I believe, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the chat, or just come off mute, um, chat with us for a little bit. We'll yeah. for a while. I, I see one uh, from Erica, uh, so do students in different types of engineering majors ever collaborate on projects, and the answer is yes, so during your first year, you can be working with students who are just in the general engineering department as a whole. Um, and you'll work on a project that, again, as you mentioned, uh, could vary from drones to windmills, anything like that. Um, and in addition, we mentioned the designs team, the design teams, which take on majors, uh, students from a bunch of different majors. Um, so you'll have the opportunity to collaborate with uh, majors um, from across the department. Um, so the question about the STEP program from John, yeah, so uh, if you do great in STEP, that's awesome. That means you know that you are totally set for the beginning of your fall semester or freshman year. I do believe all of the grades will get wiped regardless. You can't um, take that like first six weeks and just not do anything your first six weeks of freshman year. That would be nice, but um, just the way the program is designed, it's um, it doesn't transfer like that. Uh, Christine, I'm not sure on the exact percentage of retention like across four years. Um, we mentioned earlier that the retention between the first and second year is about 90% and 99% for students who are in Galileo or Hypatia. Um, but yeah, not sure about the exact number for uh, across the board. I guess something to put that in perspective a bit, I want to say the national average is about 70% of students that move on to a second year in engineering. Um, we do just have so many programs here at Tech that really reinforce the fact that we want everyone to be successful. Um, it's not a cutthroat environment like you might see at some other schools. Everyone wants to see you be successful just as much as they want to see themselves be successful. And because of that, we do have such a high retention rate. What's what's yours been like in CS? Um, it's varied a lot, actually. I mean, for general engineering students uh, in your first year, it is pretty big for the most part. Um, Besides your foundations for your class where you work in smaller groups, I think that that size class was around 25 or 30. Um, your general like calculus, physics, math, uh, sorry, physics, chemistry, stuff like that is going to be those big lecture halls. Um, but that doesn't mean there aren't resources with TAs, office hours, anything like that. So you can get personalized help. Um, it's just uh, your first year, you'll probably be in bigger classrooms, and that goes down as you get towards more specialized classes and electives. Um, and I do most engineers do internships. Is it open to anyone who wants to do it? Um, I would say that most engineers do internships. I think it's a pretty popular thing. Um, as far as like wanting to do it, it's um, a little bit different in that um, like even if you go to the career fair, there's always a chance that you might not get an internship just because that's completely up to the companies that are interviewing students um, as to like who they pick for their uh, internships and co-ops. And it definitely is a little bit more difficult um, for like underclassmen, like freshmen, just because uh, it's in the fall semester, a first career fair. And so they don't um, necessarily have a ton of transferable experience yet. Um, I know I got my first internship in the spring of freshman year because I had one semester under my belt. Um, as opposed to first semester freshman year, the companies know that you're there to kind of like feel out what a career fair is like. Um, but yeah, I would say most of them, it's a really great way to just build your resume while you're still in school um, and kind of apply that uh, knowledge you get from the classroom in like a practical environment. First, your general question, how are the professors? Um, it kind of does vary. I feel like, uh, I mean, you'll see all, all different types of professors. I think overall across the board, though, they are very helpful. 
Um, and I think most professors I've had interactions with have always been super kind and able to answer, answer any questions I need. Um, and so John, do you pay tuition during your internship? Um, no, so internships are like separate from Virginia Tech in the sense that I guess, um, like in everyone that I've done, I, I've moved somewhere completely different. I've lived kind of all over the country the last couple of years. Um, because the Noah shift that I've done was like at Tech in Virginia. Um, so I have never paid tuition. You can do like an internship and also still take classes. Um, so then you would be paying for like those credits you're taking. If it's like a part-time student, you'll pay um, less because it's not full tuition. Um, but no, you wouldn't pay tuition as if you were still fully enrolled in classes while like working somewhere else. No. Uh, so one here, what advice do you have for incoming Hokie engineers? Um, I think. Uh, just, I, I would say just approach it with excitement um, and be ready to uh, be open-minded, be able to take any new opportunities. Um, I think keeping an open mind during your first year will help you like find stuff, be um, better fit to explore different things. Um, and yeah, I'd say it, it is a very fun program to be a part of. Chris, do you have anything else? Good time management skills. Uh, I pulled my first and only all-nighter of college freshman year once because I thought I could do my calculus homework the day it was due, the day before it was due, and I could not. It was very long. It was terrible. Um, if, you, if you learn time management and you know how to space things out so you're not burning yourself out really early on in the semester, um, everything is significantly more manageable than if you do not. Okay. And Ryan, I see your question about uh, AB versus BC calculus. Um, Again, I think it's a personal preference. So I started with AP calculus and took BC later. Um, there are credits available for both. Uh, so if you look at that transfer guide that we sent earlier, you can see which um, which uh, credits get you out of which classes. Um, so AP will get you out of, I think, your first calculus and BC will get you out of the second one. Um, but yeah, again, it's really just what you feel comfortable with. Um, and if you're able to take on uh, a higher workload or spend more time studying, uh, you, you could approach BC. Um, but if, you try, if you're really trying to build that uh, fundamental in fundamentals of calculus a little bit better, then the AB might be a better choice. Yeah, Chris, uh, I, I see do have a job offer as a senior, so um, I'm going to be starting a software insurance fall. Uh, and yeah, again, um, found it like kind of through Virginia Tech uh, as a part of the group here. Uh, you're asking about extracurriculars. Um, I'm not sure exactly what FRC is, uh, but extracurriculars in general do help with admissions. Um, again, it's a holistic process. It's not just based on your uh, GPA and SAT scores. There's other factors like extracurriculars and your essays um, that do make a difference. Uh, what is the Dean's team and how do you get on? Um, so we're just a group of students that work um I guess it's under Dr. Watford. She's our um, like associate dean of I think equity and engagement, and then um, like our seed office, which is the center for the enhancement of engineering diversity. Um, and we're just kind of like a branch of that, and kind of serve as like ambassadors for the College of Engineering. I guess um, we give these presentations uh, on campus. On here, uh, we'll talk at things like Oki Focus uh, Engineering Open House throughout the semester. Um, but yeah, it's, if you like Virginia Tech a lot, they let us talk about it to you all. Um, yeah, and it was just uh, something we applied for. Um, and we do, yeah, there's a bunch of in-person uh, sessions just like this. Um, I think, yes, yeah, every day, Monday through Friday. Um, I think it's, it's pretty much every single week of the semester. Yeah, thanks for joining in today. Uh, Raj, yeah, is there a question? Um, Doing in for sessions like these, again, uh, we're just all part of the Dean's team, so um, it's kind of just a volunteer basis for uh, participating in these info sessions.